Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. If you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Here's some sunshine. It's been gloomy, so I made something bright and flowy, and it's been a minute since I made something more modern, so I wanted to scratch that itch too. It's super flowy using a stitch combination I love, and it's ultra comfy to wear, so it makes cute loungewear too. Speaking of, we got tons of casual designs to lounge around in, or where to work if business cash is your thing. So consider subscribing and click the bell so you never miss out. Also, do me a huge favor and click the like button, or dislike, whichever. The engagement helps the channel grow so I can keep making tutorials twice a week. Now it's time to get on with the show, so without further ado. For this project, any Category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 260 grams of yarn, and that's 350 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5 and 6.5 millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDTIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. Enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us your favorite sandwich. For me, the king of all sandwiches has to be the Reuben, with the turkey club as a close second. What about you? Details for the giveaway down below. Using two stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. And single crochet. This tutorial is for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size and may expand on doing the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're first going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're going to grab our 5mm hook, and we're all going to start by making a chain the height that we want our shoulder band to be. So I want mine to be just about an inch or 2 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain of 4. Now that we have our chain, we are going to block off that last chain and do a chain of one. Into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert our hook with a slip stitch. So we're going to insert. We should have two loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over and pull through both of those loops. Let's do that again. Into that next chain, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through both of those loops. Now a really quick tip that I have for doing your slip stitches, once when we finish one slip stitch, make sure that we're not pulling too tight with our working yarn so that it's not too tight to work into for our next row. I'm just now working into my last chain and my row number one is all finished up. Now right after this, all of our rows are going to be within the back loops. So to get started on our next slip stitch row, do a chain one, slip our work, insert your hook into that first available stitches, Back loop now, yarn over, and pull through everything. There's our first back loop slip stitch. Let's do that again. Into that next stitch, insert your hook into that back loop, yarn over, pull through everything, and then into that next back loop, yarn over, and pull through everything. Keep doing this until we don't have any more stitches left. And then once we're at the end of this row, we're going to continue to do more rows of back loop slip stitches. So just to get that started, do a chain one. Flip our work, and then into that first back loop, insert your hook with a back loop slip stitch. And we're going to keep repeating this row, making sure we have an even amount of rows that can stretch around our shoulders. All right, I'm back with my shoulder band, and I ended up having a total of 132 rows, and this is just about 21 inches or 55 centimeters. Now what we're going to do from here is seam our band together. So what we're going to do is just fold it in half, making sure that it's not twisted. And we're all going to start by inserting our hook into the back panel's corner stitch. Once when our hook is in through both the front and back panel's corner stitch, we're going to take our working yarn, yarn over, pull through everything. And now we're going to be doing an outside loop slip stitch seam just to make it look like another slip stitch row. So just to do the first few, into that first available stitch, into the front panel, we're going to insert our hook only into that front loop, or the loop that's nearest to us, and then into the back panel, we're going to insert our hook into that back loop, or the loop that's furthest away from us. We should now have three loops on our hook, so from here we're going to yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. Perfect. Let's do one more. Into that next stitch, into the front panel, insert your hook only into that front loop, or the loop that's nearest to you. And then into the back panel, only insert your hook 
into that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from home. Again, we should have one, two, three loops under hook. So yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. Continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left. And then do a chain of one. All right, so now that we have just finished up our seam, we're now going to single crochet along the bottom, putting one single crochet into every side slip stitch row. But first, we are going to be switching out to our six and a half millimeter hook. And to get this started, we're going to be inserting our hook into that first side row's top loop. Now, there's not going to be any loops for us to go into, so we're going to have to find it. But as you guys can see, this is my first side row right here, which is this divot. I'm going to find that top loop. And then I'm going to single crochet. Now this may be a little tough since this is a bigger hook, but this will make the rest of the top a little bit easier. And then what you're gonna do from here is find that next top loop, which is this one right here, and then single crochet. Let's do just one more set. This is my next side row, which is this raised row. Find that top loop. Wiggle your hook into there and single crochet. And then also into that next side row, which is this divot. I'm going to insert my hook into that top loop and then single crochet. And we're going to keep doing this, making our way all the way around. A quick tip is since we're putting one single crochet into every side row, we should have the same amount of single crochets as side rows as we have. And then slip stitch into that chain one space, cut, and then reach you guys back. All right, so now that we have just finished up our single crochet row, what we're going to do right before we get started on the front panel is insert our stitch markers into the halfway points on both front and back side of our band so that we can separate the front thumb and back. So the first thing we're gonna do is insert our first two stitch markers on either side of our tail end. And then all we're gonna do from there is count out an even amount of stitches until we reach our two middle stitches. And if you guys have my numbers, counting from each of my tail end stitches, I have a total of 66 stitches on one side and then 66 on the other. And I've inserted my stitch markers. And now that we have that, we are ready to get started on the front panel. So go ahead and set this off to the side. Now getting our front panel started, we're going to grab our category four yarn, make a slip knot. We're going to grab our six and a half millimeter hook. And we're all gonna start by making an even number chain that reaches from our shoulder down to where we want the bottom of this top to be. Now you can make this as long or as short as you like, but I need mine to be about 14 inches or 36 centimeters, which is right around the top of my jeans. So I'm going to start by making a chain of 52. Now that we have our chain, we are going to block off that last chain and do a chain of one. Now that extra chain doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain. And from here, we're going to single crochet into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook. So insert your hook into that second chain. Should have two loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over, pull through one. Should have two loops on our hook again, yarn over. Pull through two. Let's do this one more time. Into that next chain, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through. Should have two loops, yarn over, pull through two. Continue to put one single crochet into every chain. All right, we have just finished up our first single crochet row, and our row sequence for this piece is going to be one single crochet row and two moss stitch rows. So let's get started on our first moss stitch row. At the end of our single crochet row, getting started on our moss stitch, we are always going to do a chain two. That first chain is going to count as our turning chain. That second chain is going to count as our chain. That's going to make more sense in a second. But once we have our chain two, go ahead and flip your work. Now from here, we're going to be skipping that first stitch from our previous single crochet row. And then we're going to single crochet into the next. So since this is my first stitch, we're going to skip one into the second stitch, insert your hook with another single crochet. So insert with one single crochet, and we have just made our first chain space. And we're gonna to continue to make chain spaces, making our way all the way down. Let's do this again. From here, we're going to chain one, skip one stitch, and single crochet into the next stitch. Now we should have one, two chain spaces. Let's do one more together. Chain one, skip one stitch, single crochet into that next stitch. Now all together, you should have one, two, three chain spaces or gaps. And from here, all we're gonna do is continue to chain one, skip a stitch and single crochet into the next, making our way all the way down to the end of this row. All 
All right, we have made our way all the way down to the end of our row number two with our chain one and single crochets. And like I said, we're gonna be doing two moss stitch rows right after another. So getting started with our third row, which is our moss stitch row, we're always gonna start with a chain two and flip our work. Now it's gonna be pretty much the same thing, but instead of having a bunch of stitches, we have chain spaces to work into. So let's get this started. After our chain two, we're going to skip that first stitch, which is a single crochet from our previous row. And then into that next stitch, which is this chain space, we're going to single crochet. So go ahead and insert your hook just into that gap with one single crochet. And this forms our first chain space. Let's do this again. Chain one, skip that next stitch, which is a single crochet from our previous row. Then into that next stitch, which is a chain space, single crochet. All together, we should have one, two chain spaces. Let's do this one more time. Chain one, skip one stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, which is our chain space, like that. And we should have one, two, three chain spaces. And from here, we're going to continue to chain one, skip one stitch, single crochet into that chain space, making our way all the way down. All right, so we've made our way down with our second moss stitch row. So all together, we should have one, two, three rows. And from here, it's going to be a repeat. So another single crochet row, two moss stitch rows, and then keep doing that until we get a shoulder width that we like. I'm just gonna get started with each of the next three rows with you guys, just to remind you guys how it's done. And I'll let you guys move on from there. So getting started on our row number four, which is our single crochet row, we're going to chain one, flip our work. And from here, all we're gonna do is put one single crochet into every stitch. So into that first one, there's a single crochet. Our next stitch is a chain space. Go ahead and insert your hook into that gap with one single crochet and continue. So into that next stitch, one single crochet into that next chain space, single crochet. Continue to put one single crochet into every stitch, making your way all the way down. All right, so we've just made our way all the way down and all together we should have one, two, three, and four rows. Our next row is a moss stitch row. So like I said previously, start with a chain two and flip our work. Skip that first stitch, single crochet into the next, forming our first chain space. Let's do this again. Chain one, skip that next stitch, single crochet into the next. And then once more, chain one, skip one stitch, single crochet into the next. All together, we should have one, two, three chain spaces. Continue to chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet into the next till the end of this row. All right, we've made our way all the way down with our moss stitch row, and now all together we should have one, two, three, four, and five rows. And we're just gonna get started with our row number six, which is another moss stitch row. So do a chain two and flip your work. Skip that first stitch and single crochet into the next, which is our chain space, forming our first chain space for this row. Let's do that again. Chain one, skip one stitch, into that next stitch, single crochet. Keep doing this till we reach the end of this row. All right, so all together, we should now have one, two, three, four, five, and six rows. And then from here, we're just going to repeat our single crochet and two moss stitch row sequence until we get a shoulder width that we like. So I'm gonna keep going until I have a width that reaches from the tip of my shoulder to the base of my neck. And I'm gonna make sure that I end on a single crochet row. Then I'll meet you guys back so we can connect it into the collar. All right, so I'm back with my shoulder portion. I have a total of 16 rows and my width is just about four inches or 10 centimeters. And now that we've ended right after our single crochet row, we can attach it into our collar. So the first thing we're going to do is insert our hook into one of our stitch marker stitches. It doesn't matter which one. Just gonna insert our hook into there. And once when our hook is into there, we're going to yarn over, pull through everything, and our shoulder portion is connected to our band. And what we're going to do from here is work across our band to the other stitch marker section with the same rows. So let's get started by slip stitching into that next available stitch. I'm gonna take out this stitch marker since I don't need it anymore. And working into that next available stitch that we have, which is this one right here. So insert your hook, yarn over, 
pull through everything. That's how we work our way up to the next row when we're at the band and flip your work. Now our next row should all be a moss stitch row. So once when we're at the band working our way down, we're always going to start with a chain one and skip a stitch. So chain one, skip that first stitch, single crochet into that next stitch. And that has formed our first chain space. Let's do this again. Chain one, skip one stitch, single crochet into the next. Continue to do this, making our way all the way down. All right, so our first moss stitch row that is connected to our band is all finished up and we're going to moss stitch back. So just like before, since we're at the end of this row, we're going to chain two, flip our work, skip that first stitch, single crochet into the next, which just so happens to be our gap, and this is our first chain space. Continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left, and I'll show you guys how we're going to connect it into the base. All right, so now that we have made our way up with our second moss stitch row that is going to be connected into the band, we're going to slip stitch it into that next available stitch. So this is going to be how we connect all of our rows. And what we're going to do is since we're working our way up, we're just going to slip stitch into that next stitch to close off this row. And to work our way up to the next row, we're only going to be slip stitching up the next stitch and flip our work. And our next row is a single crochet row since we just did two moss stitch rows. So this is going to be pretty easy. Start by inserting your hook into that first stitch with one single crochet into that next stitch, which is our chain space with another single crochet. And we're gonna keep doing this, making our way all the way down. And we're going to keep repeating these three rows, making sure that we're connecting it into the base the same way that I've been showing you, making our way all the way down until we reach our next stitch marker. I'll meet you guys back once we've hit that so that I can show you guys how we're going to do our next shoulder portion. All right, so I'm back with the body portion. I have made my way all the way over to this stitch marker over here. And now all we're gonna do is do our shoulder portion. Now our next row can be any row in the stitch sequence that we're doing. It could be a moss stitch or a single crochet. We're just gonna continue on with the row sequence that we have for the same amount of rows that we have on this side and then do a chain up of one and cut. So just as a quick example, my next row is a single crochet row. All I'm gonna do is do a chain one and that's the same if you guys start on the top or along the bottom. I'm gonna flip my work and then go in with my single crochet row. I'll meet you guys back once we have the shoulder portion all finished up. All right, so I'm back and I just finished up the entirety of my front panel and the back panel is going to be done the same exact way. So just as a refresher, we're going to make a chain, the same chain that we made when we started this off, then do our single crochet and two moss stitch row sequence for the same amount of rows as our shoulder portion, slip stitching into that next stitch marker stitch into the band, and then working our way across and doing our shoulder portion on this side. Once we have the entirety of our back panel all finished up, do a chain up of one and cut, then I'll meet you guys back. All right, so I am back and I've just finished up both my front and my back panel. And the next thing we're going to do is seam our shoulders. So we're gonna start by flipping our work wrong side out. And once our work is flipped wrong side out, we're gonna be inserting a hook into the stitch that the front panel is coming out of when it comes to working into the band, and then into that stitch that the back panel is coming out of. So you're actually inserting your hook into the band. We're doing that so that we don't create a gap. Once we have that, we're going to grab our yarn and insert that onto our hook and pull through everything. Start with the chain one, and then from here, we're gonna be single crocheting into every side row making sure that we're working in through both the front and the back panel at the same time. So finding my first side row, which is this row right here, if you guys can tell, this is a single crochet row. If yours is a moss stitch row, that's completely fine. Just insert your hook into that top loop, then find our first side row into our back panel, and this is mine back here. I'm gonna find that top loop, and then I'm going to single crochet. So yarn over, pull through, pull through two. Let's do that again. Find your next side row in your front panel, which this is mine right here. This is my moss stitch. If yours is a single, that's fine. And then into the back, find the next side row, which this is mine right here. And then single crochet, and that's it. We're gonna continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left. Do a chain up a one and cut, and then do the same thing that we just did here on the other side. All right, so we are back and we have just finished up seaming both of our shoulders, and now we're going to seam our sides. 
So we're going to try out our piece and we're going to insert our stitch marker right where we want our sleeve to start. So I've inserted my stitch marker into the 26 stitch from the bottom and that's just about nine and a half inches or 26 centimeters. And now we're going to seam it up. So we're going to want to make sure that it's still flipped wrong side out so that all of our seams are along the inside once we flip it in. We're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. And then from here, we're going to do the same single crochet seam that we did for the shoulder. So start by inserting your yarn onto your hook, pull through, and do a chain up of one to secure. And just to do the first few, we're gonna be inserting our hook into that first stitch, into the front panel, and then also into that first stitch, into the back panel. And then from there, we're just going to single crochet them together. Let's do that again. Into that next stitch, into the front panel, insert your hook, and then into that next stitch, into the back panel, insert your hook, and then single crochet. We're gonna keep doing this, making our way all the way up until we reach our stitch marker. Do a chain up of one cut, and then we're gonna do the same thing that we did here on the other side. All right, so we are back and we have just finished up seaming our sides. And what we're gonna do from here is work on the sleeves. So I flip my work right side out, and I'm gonna start by inserting my hook into that stitch that's nearest to my side seam, the one that the side seam is actually connected into. So I'm going to insert my hook into there. I'm going to insert my yarn onto my hook and pull through. From here, I'm going to make an even number chain, the length that I want my sleeve to be. Now yours can be long or short. I want mine to be pretty short. So I'm gonna be making a chain of 14 and that's just three and a half inches or nine centimeters. And once we have our chain, we are going to block off that last chain and do a chain one. That chain doesn't count as stitch, that's just our turning chain, and we're gonna be single crocheting into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook. So go ahead and insert your hook into that chain with one single crochet, and then into the next chain with another single crochet. Continue to put one single crochet into every chain, making our way all the way down towards the base. Now that we've single crocheted all the way down, we're now going to slip stitch it into the base. Our sleeve is going to be worked up pretty much the same way that it's been worked when we're working into the band. So we're just going to do these next two rows as a refresher. To close off our first row, we're going to slip stitch into that next stitch into the base. And now our first row is all closed up. Now our next two rows are going to be moss stitch rows. So start by slip stitching up one stitch. And then since we're working our way out, we're going to do a chain one, flip our work. You're going to skip one stitch and single crochet into the next. Let's do that again. Chain one, skip one stitch, single crochet into the next. And we're going to keep doing this, making our way all the way down to the end. Now that we're at the end of our row number two, we're going to be chaining up two and flip our work, and we're going to do another moss stitch row. So skip that first stitch, single crochet into the next, which is a chain space, chain one, skip one stitch, and single crochet into the next. We're going to keep doing this, and then we're going to connect it into the base once we reach it, the same way that we've been doing this entire time. And then from there, we're going to repeat our single crochet and two moss stitch row sequence, making our way all the way up around our armhole. Well, we don't have any more stitches left, I will meet you guys back so that we can seam everything together. All right, so I've made my way all the way around with my single and two moss stitch row sequence, and now we're going to seam it together. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that our work is flipped wrong side out so that all of our seams are faced on the outside. And then we're gonna be inserting a hook into the corner stitch of both the front and back panel corner. I'm now gonna yarn over, pull through, and then we're going to single crochet all the way down. So just do the first few. I'm gonna insert my hook into that first stitch into the front panel. And then also into the first stitch into the back panel. And then single crochet. Same seams that we've been doing. So go ahead and keep doing this, making our way all the way down. We don't have any more stitches left, do a chain up of one and cut. And then do the same thing that we just did here for this sleeve on the other side. All right, so I'm back and I've just finished up both of my sleeves and now we're just going to single crochet along the bottom of it to clean it up. So I'm going to start by inserting my hook into any one of my side rows along one of my sleeves. Insert my yarn onto my hook, pull through, 
and do a chain up of one to secure. And from here, we're just going to be putting one seam crochet into every side row. So let's get that started. Finding my first side row right here, which is a side single crochet row, I'm going to insert my hook into there with just one single crochet. And then my next side row is this moss stitch row. I'm going to insert my hook into there with just one single crochet. And we're going to keep doing this, making our way all the way around and slip stitch into our chain one space. All right, so our first single crochet row is all finished up and we're actually gonna be doing one more into the back loops. So I did slip stitch into that chain one space and what we're gonna do from here is do a chain one and then working in the same direction that we were working into, we're gonna be doing back loops and crochets. So into that first stitch is back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us, single crochet. Into that next back loop, insert your hook and single crochet and that is it. Continue to do this, make our way all the way down, slip stitch into that chain one space, and cut. Once we have this, do the same thing to our other sleeve, and then reach you guys back. Now that we've just cleaned up both of our sleeves, we're actually going to be doing the same thing for the bottom. So just as a really quick refresher, we're going to be inserting our 6.5mm hook into any one of our side rows. We're going to put one seam crochet into every side row, slip stitch into that chain one space, and then do a back loop single crochet row. Once we have that, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I'll meet you guys back. And now that we have finished up the bottom, we are all done. The last thing we're going to have to do is weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope you all enjoyed the tutorial. Check us out on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye!